everything it was living yes. was gone. It was out of here. Yes. Uh, and you, we see in other instances all in the Bible where God brought serious, serious uh, judgment. And we, we yes. see the destruction. We see uh, uh, some of that happening today in our day. Yes. But, but, you know, it's nothing like uh, it was in the Old Testament. In the Old Amen. Testament, God did not play with people. Yes. You know, we live in an abundant dispensation of grace. Yes. For the grace of God. Amen. Yes. It's keeping us well and alive and yes. you know, holding back judgment. Amen. Amen. See, and in, in Jeremiah's day, we, we see uh, um, you know, some real uh, real serious activity here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, God was, was pleading with these people, you know, to change and yes. to repent. And the change that way. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, and, and, and I want to remind you, repentance Amen. is in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's, in, it's in the Word of God. It's in the Bible. Yes. Repentance means it means to turn around. Yes. 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 And all of us, when we come to God, uh-huh. we, we go, we're going the wrong direction. Uh-huh. And then when we come to the house of God, we come to God, God chose us what direction to go. Amen. But it's up to us to take Amen. that route. Right. Amen. We see a group of people here, we see some people that didn't listen. Uh-huh. They, 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 they didn't turn, they didn't repent like God had asked them. God said he pleaded with them, he cried unto them, and they wouldn't hear, he spoke to them, they wouldn't listen. Uh-huh. And you see at the end, uh, you know, God, God said, you know, he told Jeremiah, he said, don't even pray for him no more. Yeah, right. He said, don't even pray. I, I'm not even going to listen. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't intercede for him. Don't, don't do it. You're wasting your breath. You're wasting your time. Yeah. That's pretty raw, huh, for God. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes people would never know that God, uh, you know, God's character can get like that. People tell you, oh, God is a great, and he's a loving God, and he's oh, oh, never, oh, no, 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 don't listen to that. You see, that was these people's problem. They had a problem with being deceived by, by words that wasn't prophet, lying words. God is a God of, of mercy, but he's a God of strong judgment also. When we continue to, to, to do wrong, God will judge us for those things. I know, I've been judged. Some things happened in my life, and I know it was God's judgment. Yeah. And nobody could tell me any different. I knew, and God knew, and I knew. He made sure that I understood that. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah is dealing with um, what he said in some of the first chapters, uh, a, a rebellious <coughs> people. Yeah. But uh, I want you to um, read me. You know I like to preach verse by verse. And that way we can understand it, and then you learn, Amen. and you preach good at the same time. Amen. Amen. But Jeremiah starts off, uh, God gives Jeremiah some instruction. Mm-hmm. And uh, the instruction that he gives Jeremiah, Jeremiah is supposed to go back and carry out those instructions out word for word. All right. That's a passage responsibility. Mm-hmm. And you too as ministers, we are always responsible to God to listen and carry out. Yes. So God tells Jeremiah in that in that second verse I guess it is, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, all ye Judah that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. And he said, Thus said the Lord the host of God of Israel, that in many your ways and you in your doors, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. First thing God tells Jeremiah, he told him, he said, <coughs> he said, go stand in the gate. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to I want you to be very clear about this. A lot of times in the Bible, God is dealing with people outside. But most of the time, he's dealing with people inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we, 
we sit in church and we get our eyes off, in, off ourselves and we think it is them. Uh-uh. Yeah. He said, he said the house of the Lord is going to be the first one to go through judgment. Uh-huh. See, God's going to come in. He's going to clean up his own house first before he clean up out there. In fact, he cleaned up his own house and then what's in his house goes out there in the process of cleaning oh, up yeah. out there. Amen. So we always got to remember, God's always dealing with us. Yeah. All through the New Testament, mm -hmm. when the church started, mm -hmm. most of Paul's letters was for the church. Yeah. And he, he dealt with things inside the church, things going on. Mm -hmm. he, he dealt with, remember one time he dealt with a man that was sleeping with his father's wife. And all kinds of things like this, you know, is dealt with inside the church. Yeah. So I'm saying all that to say this, and, uh, you know, all of us, you know, God is dealing with all of us all throughout, you know what I mean? We must get our eyes off of that. Yeah. And, and this, these are the people right here in Jeremiah's day that's going into the place of worship. Yeah. See, see, look, read with me, look. Let, let, let's get this real clear. He said, he said, to stand the gates and proclaim his word, hear the word of the Lord. All ye Judah, look, look, I said, said Judah, that enter into these gates to worship the Lord. Yeah, yeah. These were people, uh, they, were, they were going to have a church service. Yes. They were going to lift up their hands, yes, hallelujah, yes, and lift yes. up their voices and yes. fall into a deep sleep, worship of God, and get down on their knees, prostrate on their face before the Lord. Yes. God said, you, you, he said, he said, enter in the gate. Now look, 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 look. He had some, he had some real tough things to say to these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He told them first that a million ways. He started talking about them stealing and, and robbing and murdering and all these things. But he told he told Jeremiah, he said this. He said, go stand at the gate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's what he told Jeremiah. Now, this is why Jeremiah was not a very popular a, a pastor. Mm -hmm. He wasn't a very popular pastor. People didn't like him. They hated him. Mm -hmm. They would kick him out of town. They threw him in the pit. They yeah. beat him up, put yeah. him in jail. Because he was standing in faith and he'd tell them what was just in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. He'd tell them. Yeah. And that's, and that's and, and in the day we in too, sometimes we have to speak up. Yeah. We have to tell people just, he told Jeremiah, he said, go stand at the gate. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give you a parable of what Jeremiah did. Yeah. Uh -huh. so these people were standing at the gate and they were coming in. Come on, yeah. They were yeah. coming in the house of the Lord. Come on, yeah. 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 Amen. And tore. Amen. Amen. And opened up for him. Yeah. 
Exactly. So the message is, he said, he said, amend your ways. Yeah. Uh, you know, change, and, and, that's, and that's tough for people to change. You know, it took so many people, you know, we, we want to go to church and we want to identify with God, and, uh, you know, and then we want, we want the blessings of God. And God told him, he said, see, this place where they was at, God had told the forefathers uh, uh, centuries and centuries ago that that was going to be a, you know, he brought them in this land, that was going to be there forever. You know, but, uh, you know, but you notice know, when Israel was falling to sin, God would bring in uh, an ungodly nation and they would, uh, they would overtake them. And they would become these slaves and all kinds of stuff like that. So God's telling me, he said, you know, if you amend your ways, yeah. if you change, yeah. he said, I, 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 I'll cause you to stay in this land. And, and people, all that means today is that, uh, you know, God's got a, a, a handful of blessings. And yeah. got good things for your life. He's got a, a good purpose for your life and a, a good place to, to remain at. And, and, uh, and, and, and he won't, you know, see, you know, the, a sin is the bulldozer that pushes the good things of God out of our lives. Yeah. Did you understand me? Sin is the big bulldozer that pushes the good things of God out of our lives. Uh -huh. Unrepentant ways that, yeah. that push the good things of, of God out of our lives. All yeah. you have to do is remember remember uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, uh, they was in that garden. They were blessed. They had everything in that garden to live off of. I mean, they were just they were living in, uh, high on the hall, just being blessed every day. And then they, they fell into sin and they ate off that forbidden tree. And then the next thing happened, they were, they were chased out the garden. Remember that? They Amen. were chased out the garden. And so, you know, they had a, they, 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 and, they and then you got people like Cain. Uh, Cain was, uh, God spoke to him uh, personally out of his own mouth and was, uh, told Cain, uh, you know, Cain had the ample opportunity to repent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times God came to him and he had an ample opportunity to repent, but Cain refused. Yeah, Cain yeah. hardened his heart and he wouldn't repent. And then the next thing you know, all the blessings of God is, uh, is, uh, is dissolved out of Cain's life. Same thing can happen to us today. Yeah. God still operates the same way. Yeah. You see, if we refuse to repent, if we refuse to change, those good things that God had planned for our life, you won't even see those good things. Right. Your neighbor will see them. Amen. The one on your right and your left, and you'll be still there wondering what's happening. What? When is yeah. God going to bless me? Yeah. When is this going to happen? Yeah. When is that going to happen? Yeah. Well, God said you need to change. You need to yeah. repent. Yeah. You need to turn from your wicked ways. Yeah. You see, repentance is essential. It is a, it's very essential in the Christian life. You know, it, the Bible says, except you repent, you shall likewise yeah. perish. Yeah. So there's, yeah. some, uh, there's some deadly uh, things that can take place in our lives because we refuse to repent, because we refuse to, to stop uh, living ungodly, and God chose us. He shows us those things in our life what we need to repent of. But it's just up to us whether we're going to allow God's word to penetrate our heart and yeah, begin yeah. to uh, shed tears out of our eyes and yeah. break open our heart and get us down on our knees and say, oh, God, I'm sorry. Uh, help me, Lord, to stop this ungodly business in my life. Help me, God, to change my way. It's up to us to do that. God's not going to make us. But God will come to us with that still small voice and yeah. saying, son or daughter, I love you. Yeah. I want to see the yeah. best for you. Yeah. Change your way. Yeah. Change your way. Yeah. So that was the word. Mm -hmm. That was the word that he thought. He said, a million ways. He said, now I'll cause you to dwell in this place. God was telling us, you repent if you change. You'll see me all in your life. Yeah, yeah, You'll yeah, see yeah. things happen in your life. Hallelujah. I'll keep you here. I'll bless you. Yeah. They won't come in and drive you out. You won't be slaves. Or you won't be in torment. Hallelujah. You won't be bound and locked down. Hallelujah. So you got to change. Yeah, yeah. Amen. You got to change. Hallelujah. Same word for the New Testament church today. You got to change. Yeah. You got to repent. Yes. He said, he said, these people coming into my house, again, he's not talking to them drug dealers out there right now. Mm. He's not talking to those dope fiends out there. He's not talking to those prostitutes. He's not talking to those crooked businessmen, all these people. He's talking to the church. Amen. 
sent James away. Yes. He told Jeremiah, he said, stand at the gate when they're coming in. Mm -hmm. Stand at the gate. Pay all those people coming into my house to worship. Yes. Great stuff, huh? Amen. Amen. It's real. Hallelujah. It's real, James. Yes. It's real. And God goes on to say in verse 4, trust me not in my words. Mm -hmm. Now these are the things that Jeremiah was telling these people as they walked in the gate. Mm -hmm. First said of men your way. Mm -hmm. And then he told them if you came, this is what, what I'll do. He said, I'll call you to dwell in this place. Amen. See, so there's always something real good when we want to put God's word in the practice in our lives. Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. There's always something real good that happens, you know, when we put God's word in practice in our lives. Amen. And they're, they're not saying that you're not going to have some trials, but that'll happen when you put God's word in practice. Amen. But, but God always blesses us some kind of way also. Amen. When we put his word to practice. Amen. And then Jeremiah told me, he said, but don't trust in lying words. Mm -hmm. The word lying words can be interpreted as deceiving words also. Mm -hmm. Saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. You see, Jeremiah was dealing with people in the church that uh, these people have been deceived and thinking because they're in the temple of the Lord everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. They have been deceived you know, thinking that as long as I go to church as long as I show up to church put on my long dress you know, Put my nice shirt on. Sing. Yes, sir. Mm -mm. Come on now. I'm preaching down to where we at. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's okay. Uh huh. And you know, I can just keep on teaching and keep on lying. Um. You know, I can, I can go home and get my little stash out. Go around the corner, hang out with homeboys, talk about all these dirty jokes. Come on, come on. What I want to do? Yeah, what I want to do with Sally is Judy. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, I can even go home and get on the phone and just gossip all day. church is good and it's the thing to do. Amen. But I want to tell you something though. If we don't repent, we, we, we're wasting a lot of our time going to church. Amen. Because all we're doing is just getting ourselves ready for judgment to fall on us. Even though we're sitting right in church. Amen. So, so Jeremiah told us, he said, don't, don't trust in lying words. Uh -huh. don't, 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 don't talk about the temple. Don't see the temple the temple. In fact, God don't even want to hear about the temple. God wants to hear about how, how you're changing. Y'all don't want to hear about how many times you go to church. You Amen. know what I mean? God don't want to hear about how good you sing in the choir. God Amen. don't want to hear about how good you can read the word or how good you can do that. God wants to hear about how good can you repent. You know, Amen. what are you going to do about changing your ways Amen. and living right? Amen. So he said, don't trust in lying words. You, you see, the Bible tells us, that, uh, I believe it's in the book of Ephesians, that don't, don't be deceived, neither fornicators and murderers and adulterers and all these people. He said, none of these people are going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. The Bible tells us, don't be deceived. Amen. 
And, and that's what that's what Jeremiah's dealing with. Jeremiah's dealing with people that think it's okay, you know what I mean? They can go out and do a, do a bunch of stuff, uh-huh. and then and then identify with the church. God said, "No, that's not okay. You need to repent." Amen. And I'm preaching the truth to you. Today. Just read it. All you got to do is read it. Amen. You'll see what, what Jeremiah what Jeremiah's talking to. He said, Don't he said don't he said don't say that the temple, the temple, the temple. He said, Don't trust in these lying words. It's not the it's not the it's not the temple that's gonna save you, it's Jesus. Amen. 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 It's not it's not coming to church is gonna that's gonna Amen. save you, it's getting your life right with the Lord and obeying Amen. him. That's what's gonna save you. Amen. goes on to say verse 5 he says for if you truly amend your ways and your doings if you truly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor if you oppress not the stranger the fathers and the widow and shed not innocent blood in this place neither walk after other gods to your hurt then I will cause you to grow. See that again? He's talking about repentance. Amen. He, he's talking about repentance. See, see all these things these people was involved in. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, then I will cause you to, you to dwell in this place in the land that I have gave to your fathers forever and ever. Repentance. He's dealing with some things uh, that these people were living in. They were oppressing the strangers the fatherless, and the widows. Uh-huh. And these are the most vulnerable, helpless people that they are in the, in the world. Mm-hmm. Children have their fathers, the widows, and, and, and the strangers from, from another country, or uh, another state or something. Uh, and they, you know, they, and they, were, they were involved in mistreating these people. And, uh, and then he goes on, he said, and shed not innocent blood in this place. You need to walk after the other gods to get hurt. You know, we, we see that as a big man with God about serving the other gods. Uh-huh. So they were involved in all these things. Uh-huh. And God was, God was talking to them to repent. And he was sharing with them. And this probably wasn't the first time that God had mentioned this. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, again, at the end, we see that. God uh, poured out for a copy of judgment. He says in, in verse 7, then I will call you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave your father forever and ever. And then he says, Behold, you trust in lying words, which cannot profit. Then it has come up again. Yeah. And, and the lying words were, you know, it's okay to oppress the widow. It's okay to oppress the father. It's, it's okay to shed innocent blood. We can be Christians and still do that. Hello? Let yeah. me let me give you let me bust your bubble. Right. Sin is never gonna identify with the kingdom of God. Amen. It's never gonna it's never gonna make place in God. God's never gonna be okay right. with sin in our life. He's never Amen. gonna be okay with ugliness and ungodliness in our life. Amen. What God is okay with is when we repent from those lifestyles. Amen. 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 The only reason that God is holding us up is because his mercy. Amen. His mercy is enduring and enduring and enduring. But you see, one time, you know, we can put God's mercy away for one too many times. Yes. But God's not okay with sin. No, yes. God never let nobody lie to you and tell you he is. Right. Yeah, we can confess our sins. The Bible says that he's faithful and just to forgive us. But God wants us to come to a place in time, too, where we yes. repent. Yes. Amen. Yes. Where we begin to change. Yes. Amen. Yes. We begin yes. to change the way our thinking yes. and our mind. Yes. You know, yes. we have stinking thinking, and sometimes we... We just stuck in that same uh, way of thinking about everything, and then we just get ourselves involved in things in life that we shouldn't get involved with. Amen. It's not okay with God. No. Don't don't let nobody lie to you and tell you what Jeremiah is telling these people. You're trusting in lying words. Yeah. You know, one of, one of the, probably one of the most uh, wickedest things in the world that we can do as, as brothers and sisters. In the Lord and those and those people that's been uh, walking with God for some time is beginning to live lifestyles that's been yeah. different from God yeah. and teach other people those lifestyles. Yes, that's right. It's a lie. Mm-hmm. 
And you see somebody when they don't live in sin, you see men going out and committing adultery, that's a lie. Yeah. Don't live like that. You see women doing that, that's a lie. Amen. Don't follow. Amen. But Jim, I told you, you trust in the lying words. These yeah. words are the lie. So they're not the truth. And if they're lying, guess where they come from? Right. The That's right. Yeah. Didn't the Bible say that he's the beginning, he's the murder and the lie and the father of lies? Yeah. Yeah. In this Bible is the truth. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God's word is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah told them, don't trust in those things. Yeah. Don't follow those ways. Don't follow people like that. Yeah. Get away from them. Yeah. Expose them. The mountain of hurting yourself. Yeah. What God has for you, you probably won't receive it. Amen. So God said to get away from those people. Uh-huh. He says, He says, Behold, in verse 8, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Uh-huh. Here's some more things that they were doing. Look, you keep God keep repeating this over. Whenever God repeats something like that. Over and over, trusting, talking about lying words and then the things that you see. This is really time to listen. Amen. When God makes emphasis on something, it's really time to listen. He's re- continuing to repeat it. Jeremiah continuing to repeat it because God is continuing to repeat it. He said in verse 8, Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Uh-huh. See that? He said cannot profit. Yeah. It ain't going to profit us nothing. To live a, a, a life a, a, against the word of God. Amen. The only way we're going to profit for people is if we have to line our lives up with the word of God. Amen. And follow the word. Amen. He, said, he said you trust in, in lying words which cannot profit. Then he said in verse 9, look, he repeats some of these things again. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery? That's why I, that's why I talked about committing adultery. That's a big thing in the Christian life. We do that, and sometimes it's very easy to do. And and think that it's nothing. Sometimes people are in church for 20 years Uh and committing adultery every week. Uh And they come to church and, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. (laughs) What a mighty God we serve. Come on, preach out. Amen. Amen. Got all that filth in their life. Got all that filth in their life. God said that's not right. He said, don't trust in lying words. You're not going to get nowhere. Amen. You're not going to profit. Amen. All right? I'm talking about what God is saying. Read it. Amen. I'm not talking about what does say it Bruce. I'm talking about what does say it the Lord. Amen. Yeah. And people, we got to be in the church, amen, to stand on the forefront. God has got us all out there in the community doing big things and stuff. And the whole community has got their eyes on this little church. Yeah. Little church with 25, 30 people in it. And we be we are spectacle more than the people church sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right we have to get right. Amen. We have to quit a lot of this monkey business and funny business we're doing. Amen. God told me to preach this word because there's people in here that's guilty. Amen. You know who you are. Amen. We need to we need to confess up. We need to get out on our knees until tears just flow out of our eyes and begin to repent. God, you know, God ain't gonna worry about what happened yesterday. Uh-uh. I'm not, I'm not up here saying that God is gonna, is gonna, you know, God is that type of a God. He ain't gonna hold nothing to get you from yesterday. He's talking about today. Amen. So yesterday is, is gone, Amen. and all we have to do is tell God we're sorry and repent. Amen. But we're facing the day. Amen. See, God's looking for people that repent. Amen. Amen. So he, he asked him. He said. When you steal, murder, on I mean, verse 9, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense on the bell, bell was a foreign god, the false god that they were serving. And walk out the other god who you know not. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. Boy. Uh, think about it. Uh, about how God feels. Mm-hmm. Think about some of the things that I say. It sounds real wrong, but now listen to what God said. Listen to this. He said, will you do all these things in verse 10 and come stand before me in this house? Mm -hmm. Man. He said, will you do all these things? Do you got the nerve? Come on, say it. Is your conscience been murdered? Mm -hmm. So 
over up. Have you seen him come to nothing? Have you have you just thought of my house as any old house? Has it become so so uh, untouching? Uh-huh. Where you can't where you pass feeling yeah. and have no respect uh-huh. for my house. Have you been doing all these things and then you come and stand before me in my house? Yeah, yeah. Playing it off. Yeah. Playing the role. Mm. Now, I think right now God is dealing with a lot of leaders. Mm-hmm. I, I'm going to tell you, leaders, yeah. those of you people that are doing things in the, in the house of God, James said, Be not many masters. That knowing this, that we shall receive the greater condemnation. James says, don't do it. Amen. Don't lead uh-huh. if you can't conduct yourself properly. Come on now. Yeah. Don't do it. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, because you plan with God. Amen. God said, will you do all these things and then come stand before me?
We better plan on repenting and turning from our wicked ways and turn to God. I'm going to wrap it up here real quickly. But this is good stuff. It's wrong, it's wrong, but it's good for us. So he says, they said, he said, you come before me, you stand in my house, but you call me my name, and you're saying, what you never to do, I'll leave abomination. And again, they, they were saying, is this okay? You know, with God. In this house, which is called in my name, it says, become a den of robbers in your eyes. Did you get that with me? In verse, in verse 11, he says, In is this house which is called in my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes. And see, that's what can happen. You know, as we have things like this going on in our lives, other people are taught by example. Amen. And before you know it, everybody in the Holy Church mm -hmm. think it's okay to gossip. Out. It's okay to commit adultery. It's okay to lie. It's okay to steal, mm -hmm. cheat, go out and, and party, mm -hmm. and uh, do all these things. And, you know, it just, it just becomes a, a, a den of uh, a, a lies and deeds. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and we don't want that. So we, want, we want a house of God clean and holy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to be in a robber and deeds. Yeah. Yeah. So he goes on to say, <laughs> Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, even I have seen it. So we don't hide nothing from God. But go ye now to the place which is Shiloh, where I will set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for his wickedness of my people Israel. So God is, God is telling them. Mm -hmm. He's telling them, look, you, you look at the place of Shiloh, uh -huh. and you see what I did to them. Uh, 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 for, for them to wicked like that. Come on now. You see, so God has given us an example. We got examples of, uh, uh, of, uh, 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 of Sodom and Gomorrah and, uh -huh. and all these other uh, wicked, wicked people that lived and were, and were destroyed. Uh -huh. And so God, you know, there's examples. All we have to do is sometimes look at other people in the church. Uh -huh. And sometimes you can see the people that God has really built up and yeah. change their lives, and then you can see people too that God has placed judgment upon. Amen. So He told me, He said, to "Go to Shiloh, and you, you see, you see the wickedness that I've done unto them." Uh -huh. Well, God was telling them, "It ain't gonna be no different with you. Amen. Don't it ain't gonna be no different with us Amen. if we don't change, if we don't repent, if we don't turn from wickedness Amen. and turn to, to a holy and true God." Amen. So He said to go and see the wickedness of my people Israel. He said, and now, because we have done all these works, said the Lord, he said, and I'll say something to you. Get what God is saying. He said, I'll say something to you. I told you. Mm -hmm. I pleaded with you. Yes, you did. Rising up early and speaking with you. Uh -huh. He said, but you heard not. Mm -hmm. In other words, God was talking to people like he's talking to us today. Amen. Look what they did. They did this. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. They literally put their hands up there. But you don't have to hear if you don't want to. Mm -hmm. and we know that. He said, I, I spoke to you. He yes. said, and you heard it not. Yes. In other words, he said, he, he asked them to repent. They uh -huh. wouldn't repent. Amen. They wouldn't even change. There uh -huh. wouldn't be nothing about their wicked, wicked lifestyle. Uh -huh. And God said, I, I spoke to you early. I, yes. I spoke to you. Rising up early. God was saying what God was saying. I spent a lot of time yes. pleading with you. Yes. Yes. You know, you know, God pleads with us. Yes. Uh, you know, Isaiah says, come and, and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though your sin be red as crimson, I'll make them white as snow. Yes. See, God is always pleading with people and, and, and bothering with people and trying to get people to reason yes. and to wake up and stop. Amen. And, 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 and Jeremiah said, God said, I, I rose up early, but you heard not. I called you and you didn't answer. And verse 14, he says, Therefore will I do unto this house which I which is called by my name, when you trust, and unto this place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. He said, Now, he said, Look, you, the same thing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Judgment. 
Because you wouldn't listen. Yeah, right. I want everybody to listen today. If we don't listen, then we're going to listen when judgment comes. Yeah. If we don't listen now, we're going to listen when judgment comes. Because you belong to God. You got people to make up his house. Yeah. God's not going to keep on putting up with nonsense. You got to stop the nonsense just like me. Amen. I have to stop the nonsense too. Amen. I'm working on my stuff every day. Amen. Are you working on yours? Amen. So I, are we just coming yeah. to church? Or are, we, are we going home? We say, God, help me to stop smoking. Yeah. Help me to stop lying, God. Yeah. Help me to stop cheating people, yeah. God. Help me to keep, stop stealing. Help me to stop taking that dope and drinking Amen. and running out with women and different things. Help me, God, to stop these things. Okay. Are we going home and we begging with God to stop these things? Or we just continue to come to church like ain't nothing happened. Uh, Say that, preacher. It's going to happen. Yeah. Big time sparks are going to happen. Amen. If we don't change. Amen. So now, see, God dealt with the people. He said, I, he said, I spoke to you, uh, and you wouldn't listen. Uh, see, these people, whatever God told them, they were listening to him. Mm -hmm. And so so now he said, and look on the right side of your order, sir. Mm -hmm. In verse 15, he said, and he said, and I will cast you out of my sight. Boy, none of us want that. Amen. Come on, say that. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be cast out of God's sight. Come on now. Then the devil can do just about do what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason that all of us are still <coughs> alive and well because we get up under God's eyes for protection. See, and this is now this is now judgment yes. to fall on these people for not repenting. Yes. God told them and told them and told them. Haven't we been told yes. all of our Christian lives to repent? Heaven, all of us. This is not the first time we've been told to repent. This is just a little more deeper warning. But we've been told all our Christian lives to repent. Okay, so God tells him, He said, Now I'm going to cast you out of my sight. As I have cast out your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. He said, I, I've done it to him. He said, Now I'm going to do it to you. And now He tells Jeremiah, He said, Don't pray for these people. Look. Verse 16, don't pray for these people. You need to lift up Christ, not prayer for them. You need to make intercession for them. He said, well, I will not hear. Uh, this is so, man, I cannot imagine trying to live this life and not, not having God near to me. Not being able to cry to God. Amen. I depend, I don't know about you, but I depend on God. I'm afraid to wake up and get out of my bed and try to walk through the day without God. I need God all around me. I know how real the devil is. And I know I see what's happening to people on the face of the earth. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm a, I fear God. I fear God. I don't want to do it. And I don't know what you want to do, but that's what I don't want to do. I don't want to get up out of bed and try it without God. He said, I'll cast you out of my sight. He said, I won't hear you pray. I depend on God. I have to pray for everything. I'll tell you something, even for this church that's operating, yes. the main thing I have to pray God, help yes. me with this, help yes. me with that. Yes. Bring them work. I'm praying them workers and they're coming. Yes. They are coming. Yes. This young man didn't come on his own. God sent him from prayer. Yes. The other girl was going to be working with them kids didn't come on own. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Yes. A lot of you are still in your right mind because I've been praying for you every day. Yes. I can imagine living, living without prayer. Amen. All my kids, they're bad. They got sin in their life. Yeah. And I'm praying every day, God have mercy on them. Yeah. And open their eyes up. Hallelujah. I need God. I need to yeah. pray. And you do too. Hallelujah. Repent. Amen. Yeah. Repent. Get up. Come up here this pump. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. I know Come on up. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Hallelujah. Let's go. Let's do what God says. Amen. Sister Victoria, can you help me pray for these people, please? Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. 